Welcome. In this session, I'm going to discuss about uh, testes and ovaries and also hormones produced by other structures in the body. So we'll see first about the testes. So in males, one pair of testes are located outside the abdomen in scrotum. So it's located in scrotum. Right. And these testes have uh, dual roles. So one, they act as primary sex organs where they produce uh, sperms and secondly they also act as endocrine glands. endocrine glands right now uh, the test is it consists of uh, so each test is has it consists of two parts one seminiferous tubules so inside the test is there are seminiferous tubules and uh, in between these seminiferous tubules there is a uh, stromal tissue so the stromal or interstitial tissue okay so when we see the transverse section so we can see here these are seminiferous tubules and in between the seminiferous tubules so seminiferous tubules and in between the seminiferous tubules we will, we will find cells so that form the interstitial cells so these are all interstitial cells which are present between seminiferous tubules so these are all together form interstitial tissue <coughs> So it is inside these seminiferous tubules there will be formation of sperms and outside the seminiferous tubule that is uh, filled with the interstitial tissues so they are responsible for production of uh, some hormones. So let's see the stromal or interstitial tissue this consists of uh, interstitial cells consists of interstitial cells or Leydig cells consists of interstitial or Leydig cells and these cells produce hormones called testosterone called testosterone right so this testosterone is produced in response to GnRH so that is gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, that is released from hypothalamus so here once we'll see we know hypothalamus it produces GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone so the GnRH it stimulates uh, anterior pituitary it stimulates anterior pituitary gland so the anterior pituitary gland in response to GnRH it produces and releases two hormones that is FSH and uh, ICSH so this ICSH is also called uh, of course LH I told you that LH in males should be called ICSH interstitial cell stimulating hormone right and FSH is a follicle stimulating hormone so this FSH will act on Sertoli cells it acts on Sertoli cells which are also called sustentacular 
cells also called such tentacular cells so these such tentacular cells will produce a hormone called inhibin they produce a hormone called inhibin and this inhibin will have a negative impact on anterior pituitary so if there is an okay more production of inhibin the inhibin tells the anterior pituitary to stop production of fsh and icsh so this is what we call a negative feedback mechanism is <coughs> called negative feedback mechanism and coming to icsh the icsh will be producing right uh, i mean the icsh uh, produced one will act on interstitial cells act on interstitial cells uh, which are also called leydig cells and it results in the production of uh, testosterone results in the production of testosterone right so this testosterone has some effects like uh, it helps in spermatogenesis that is production of sperms plus so it is responsible for production of uh, secondary sexual characters responsible for secondary sexual characters the secondary sexual characters in males like uh, development of beard mustache and development of uh, actual hair and so so and this testosterone excess can also right tell to the anterior pituitary so if it is produced in excess quantities to stop the production of fsh and icsh so this is again a negative feedback mechanism right so the sertoli cells uh, also uh, this process it actually helps in spermiogenesis helps in spermiogenesis right so this is how uh, the hypothalamus uh, producing gnrh uh, stimulates the anterior pituitary which where uh, fsh and icsh are released and have their effect on the testis okay right so testis so has two parts seminiferous tubules and interstitial tissue so it is in the seminiferous tubule uh, we see the formation of uh, sperms so here these are all uh, sperms that's the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and all these will be spermatogonia at various stages of uh, uh, division so all these <coughs> right so these are sperms now let us see the functions of these uh, okay testosterone of course uh, here interstitial cells or leydig cells will produce uh, certain hormones actually so all those hormones together we call them androgens call them androgens so one example one common androgen is a testosterone is testosterone okay so it produces uh, certain hormones all those hormones together are called androgens and uh, one example of that uh, androgen is a testosterone right now let us see the functions of these uh, testosterone so that's uh, functions of androgens so here androgens they regulate the development 
so they are going to regulate the development then maturation and functions of male accessory sex organs so they regulate okay development maturation and functions of the male sex okay accessory sex organs so what are all these male accessory sex organs so they include epididymis then vas deferens then seminal vesicles prostate gland urethra etc are all male access, uh, accessory sex organs so these androgens will regulate their function maturation and development then the next one androgens also stimulate muscular growth so they stimulate muscular growth and uh, growth of uh, facial hair facial and even axillary hair on the body then even the androgens are responsible for aggressiveness in males so responsible for aggressiveness in males then also responsible for producing low pitch voice so etc right and then they also play an important role in spermatogenesis so they play important role so just now we have seen so they are uh, they play important role in spermatogenesis the formation of uh, sperms then these androgens also act on central nervous system and influence the male sexual behavior influence the male sexual behavior right so this is called uh, libido okay so uh, these are some functions of uh, androgens that right. we'll see uh, one more so they also produce anabolic effects they also or they are also responsible for anabolic effects produce uh, anabolic effects produce anabolic effects on protein and carbohydrate metabolism so here anabolic effects which mean anabolic effects uh, which means here uh the constructive processes like uh, the development of muscular uh, body so constructive process so anabolic effects so their constructive process development so it uh, results in the development of male body so all that will be uh, coming under anabolic effects so they also produce so anabolic effects on protein as well as carbohydrate metabolism so these are some functions of uh, androgens uh, next we'll see about the uh, ovary so the next one is ovary so ovary also has uh, same functions like uh, uh, testes so they 
act as primary sex organs and also they produce ova then here uh, there are one pair of ovaries so one pair of ovaries located in the lower abdominal region located in the lower abdominal region right and uh, the ovary each ovary it consists of uh, two tissues like ovarian follicles and stromal tissue so embedded in the stromal tissue we find ovarian follicles so these ovarian follicles will be having uh, the egg in a developmental stage so at a at a particular developmental stage each ovarian follicle will have one egg so the next one so these ovarian follicles the cells of these ovarian follicles they produce a, a hormone called estrogen they produce hormone called estrogen so similarly uh, how we have seen in case of uh, uh, testes where hypothalamus producing gnrh so we will see here so hypothalamus so it produces gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone this will act on anterior pituitary act on anterior pituitary gland and in response it releases two hormones fsh and lh so here lh is called lh luteinizing hormone uh, i told you in case of males the lh is icsh interstitial cell stimulating hormone so this fsh is going to act on granulosa cells will act on granulosa cells of ovary and these will release estrogens so estrogen hormones and even inhibin is produced so excess quantities can have a negative feedback effect on anterior pituitary so this is negative feedback and coming to lh so lh will produce okay two uh, i mean it affects on two structures one it is corpus luteum so we know after releasing the egg the ovarian follicles will become into corpus luteum and these corpus luteum will produce progesterone and estrogen so here uh, all those hormones which are produced by ovarian follicles collectively called estrogen so one example of this estrogen is estradiol like a testosterone where we have seen androgens one example of androgen is testosterone and an example of this uh, estrogen is estradiol so corpus luteum produces progesterone estrogen hormones and it is also responsible for ovulation release of egg from the ovary is called ovulation so this is how uh, the hypothalamus which acts on anterior pituitary and the anterior pituitary controlling uh, the functions of testes right now let's see after ovulation after ovulation uh, the follicle so that uh, is actually called graafian follicle the graafian follicle 
is the mature follicle will release the egg and this graphene follicle will change into corpus luteum will change into corpus luteum so the graphene follicle has released the egg so it released the egg and then it became a corpus luteum and this corpus luteum is the main structure that produces a hormone called uh, progesterone so corpus luteum after releasing egg after releasing egg uh, it becomes a corpus luteum and uh, it produces a hormone called uh, progesterone okay so this progesterone helps in maintaining helps in maintaining pregnancy so hence it's called a pregnancy hormone so now let's see the functions of uh, estrogens functions of estrogens coming to these uh, functions of estrogens they are responsible for uh, growth and activities of female sex organs they are responsible for growth and activities of female sex organs and also a development of uh, growing follicles development of uh, growing follicles then appearance of so appearance of uh, female secondary sexual characters so just like uh, in case of males secondary sexual characters here also the estrogens are responsible for female secondary sexual characters so these uh, secondary female secondary sexual characters will include like a uh, high pitch voice so high pitch voice and then development of mammary glands of mammary glands and uh, like widening of uh, hip region like etc are some secondary sexual characters seen in case of uh, females uh, those are all produced due to effect of uh, estrogens then estrogens also regulate the female sexual behavior so the next one the regulate female sexual behavior and then as i told already the progesterone uh, supports pregnancy and it is called pregnancy hormone uh, acts even on mammary glands and uh, stimulates the formation of uh, alveoli okay so that's about uh, the hormone uh, progesterone so this is about the ovary that acts as a primary sex organ as well as uh, uh, producing endocrine glands i'm sorry here i have mentioned uh, both same acts as primary sex organs and uh, uh, of course it produces ova as uh, over and it acts as endocrine gland act as endocrine gland next we'll see about hormones of heart 
kidney and gastrointestinal tract so here first let's say about heart so hormones of heart hormones of heart so here hormones of heart so first we'll see about uh, atrial natriuretic factor so this is in short called ANF so this is a peptide hormone and this uh, peptide hormone is released from atrial wall released from atrial wall so that's why it's called atrial natriuretic uh, factor so here uh, this atrial natriuretic factor is a hormone that is uh, mainly acts as acts as vasodilator acts as vasodilator the meaning of vasodilator is uh, uh, it is or it reduces blood pressure or it acts on it acts on blood vessels so that results in increase in the diameter increase in the diameter of uh, blood vessels so due to increase in the diameter of the blood vessel there will be decrease in the blood pressure so this results in decrease in blood pressure decrease in blood pressure right so that is uh, only one hormone produced from the heart which is called atrial natriuretic factor right then coming to the hormones of a kidney hormones of kidney so here the kidney produces a hormone called erythropoietin so this erythropoietin is also a peptide hormone is a peptide hormone and this is uh, released from the juxta glomerular cells released from juxta glomerular cells of uh, kidney and what is its function so erythropoietin right stimulates erythropoiesis so it stimulates erythropoiesis so what is erythropoiesis so erythropoiesis is formation is formation of uh, red blood cells is formation of uh, red blood cells so it's called erythropoiesis so that is the only hormone produced from the kidney so coming to the hormones of gastrointestinal tract so the gastrointestinal tract will be producing uh, at least uh, four different hormones so let's see the hormones of uh, gastrointestinal tracts so it produces hormones like uh, gastrin and then secretin and then cholecystokinin so in short it is called cck cholecystokinin of course uh, there is one more word we can use it uh, called pancreozymin then another one called gastric inhibitory gastric uh, inhibitory peptide so it's called GIP 
gastric inhibitory peptide GIP. So let's see this gastrin is a hormone released by released by G cells released by G cells right of uh, pancreas so released by G cells I'm sorry uh, sorry uh, released by G cells of uh, gastric glands so those uh, gastric glands in pyloric stomach pyloric stomach right and uh, in duodenum also in duodenum also it produces uh, gastrin and also in pancreas also in pancreas the gastrin hormone or also by uh, pancreas produces this uh, gastrin hormone then coming to secretin so this is produced by or released by duodenal mucosa by duodenal mucosa then coming to cholecystokinin so this is uh, produced in duodenum produced in duodenum whereas gastric inhibitory peptide so this is produced by K cells in duodenum and also in jejunum right so now let's look at uh, we now we have seen about the locations where they are produced or produced by structures now we will see their functions gastrin so here the function of gastrin is uh, it acts on so acts on gastric glands acts on gastric glands and stimulates and stimulates secretion of HCL and pepsinogen stimulates the secretion of HCL and pepsinogen so that's the function of uh, as gastrin the next one secretin so this secretin acts on exocrine part of pancreas it acts on exocrine part of uh, pancreas and it stimulates it stimulates the secretion of water and bicarbonate ions stimulates the secretion of water and uh, bicarbonate ions then the function of CCK cholecystokinin so it acts on both pancreas acts on both that is a pancreas and also acts on gallbladder so gallbladder is uh, a, uh, an organ that stores bile juice so this one gallbladder stores uh, bile juice so it acts uh, on both pancreas and uh, gallbladder and stimulates stimulates the secretion of stimulates the secretion of pancreatic enzymes and uh, bile juice and bile juice respectively right so this uh, CCK also helps in uh, relaxing sphincter of body so it relaxes 
sphincter of OD. So those are uh, functions of cholecystokinin or pancreozymin. Then coming to gastric inhibitory peptide. So this inhibits it inhibits gastric secretion inhibits gastric secretions and uh, motility so uh, that is uh, actually uh, inhibiting or inhibits emptying of uh, stomach so i'll mention inhibiting or inhibits inhibits uh, emptying of stomach okay so that's all about uh, the hormones of heart kidney and gastrointestinal tract so with this uh, i will end today's session in tomorrow's session we'll see about mechanism of hormone action